Hello and welcome to Flight Iron Sessions with me, Alex Jardine, and today we're going to be looking at tying my five best mayfly imitations. Now for us in the UK, uh, mayfly stands for a particular, um, particular type of upwing, uh, which is part of the ephemera family, so ephemera danica, uh, or angler's mayfly, uh, which is very similar to um, some of the green drake uh, insects that they get over in over in the US. So, whilst this is quite a specific subject for for the type of fishing I'm doing in the UK, it does have wider reaches across the world as well. And some of the styles of tying adapt very well to different upwing flies. Um, and the great thing with tying mayflies is they're big. So I thought start where the fly starts. Uh, we're going to start in its nymphal stage by tying Walker's mayfly nymph. Now, for the type of for a lot of the waters that I fish during the mayfly time, it's dry fly only. Um, but in a lot of other waters that experience mayfly hatches, nymphing is allowed, and quite often you'll find in the mornings. Uh, that the fish will be taking the nymphs and they'll still be breaking the surface but they're purely chasing the um, the nymph uh, the nymphs up to the surface and breaking breaking the water there All right, just playing with the lights so for this we've got the partridge G3AY um, which is a long shank uh, nymph hook uh, and I'm this is a size 8, but you can tie it in a 10 as well. And we're just going to add some lead wire. And I want to load from around about the point of the hook. And take my wire forward. Touching turns, we don't want, and we can push that together to make sure all the turns are nicely locked in. Don't go all the way to the eye, stop a good three or four turns short and then take your wire back on top of itself. Just place five or six turns and then rotate the wire until it breaks off. So we're essentially loading the wire towards the front part of the hook. Uh, that will give us our weight but also the shape of the fly as well. Thread-wise, uh, we're going with the Semperfly Nano Silk in 18.0 uh, in white uh, because we don't want this to take up too much. Um, we don't want to add colour with with this particular um, thread. So start just back of the eye in front of the wire, and then before we put any pressure on the wire, keep this long tag end. Just take our thread in loose open turns over the top. This will hold the wire in position. Try not to put any pressure down, otherwise it will split the wire open. And then once we're at the back end of the wire, you can place some locking turns to act as a, a dam to stop the wire opening out. At which point we can take off our tag end. And then just look to put a, a crisscross of thread turns over the top. And then take our thread to the end of the shank and we're going to add in our tail material. So very simply um, just take a natural English partridge feather so uh, if you're lucky enough you'll have a whole cape and I take the feathers from around about the tail region so just the start of the tail um, because these are feathers that you wouldn't necessarily use for other types of tying so they're good good feathers to utilize and for a tail I'm just going to get rid of these fluffy fibers that we don't want we want these nice speckled fibres towards the tip of the feather 
They have a nice, uh, nice barring, a lot of colour, um, but don't have too much webbing on them. And I want to take a good, good pinch of them. So sort of six or seven fibres and bundle them together. Now the tail of the nymph isn't very long, so we can just bind that in. Just bind that in and lock everything down and we can actually just take all the tag ends forward because that will just help create the body shape a little. And now we're going to add our rib material, uh, which is the Semifly Micro Metal in brown. So it's got the effect of wire, but it's actually a thread based material. So it doesn't add any weight. Um, if you don't have this, then you can use a copper wire or, or something similar, uh, which will do a fairly good job as well. So cut a small section of it there and just lay it down on the wire and put in our locking turns all the way down to the tail there and then we'll just hang that out the way while we get our body material. Now it's a dubbed body, uh, this is the Semperfly super fine dubbing and the colour very helpfully uh, is called Danica, so it's quite a camely yellow colour. Um, and because we're representing the Danica, it's an easy uh, an easy choice. Uh, the nice thing with this dubbing is the super long fibres, so it gives us great dubbing control all the way through the fly. Just take a small pinch of it, you can barely see it to begin with and just mesh that, dab that on to start our noodle and we can leave this slightly thick a bit until a little later we just want to get these first locking thread turns on and then we can begin to tighten up the dubbing from the bottom and that will really tighten then through this middle section and take it forward. Now we're looking to get a taper as we go forward towards what would in theory be the egg sac, uh, not the egg sac, sorry, the, um, uh, the wing case. Jumping the gun a little. Um, which is when the fly is swimming up to the top, that's the area where all the wing is encased and breaks out before the fly takes to the air. Now once we get to this thicker part of the, of the wire, we know that the body's reached its point and we need to start working on the thorax from that area. So we're now going to take our rib forward. So we're going to take it in the same direction as the dubbing and nice open turns which is looking to create a segment like body so just a handful of turns all the way forward and then take our thread over and in front just to make sure it's all locked off and then just nip it out with our scissors there and now we're going to do the important wing case part. So now we're going to take another natural partridge feather uh, that we've taken from that same area towards the back of the, the bird skin. And again, I'm just going to lose, oh, not quite what I meant to do, but we're going to lose those fluffy feathers. And we're also going to look to take the tip out of this. So stroke back the fibres and then just 
take our scissors, go in front and nip the tip of the feather out, which will leave us with a nice V formation there, like so. And what we'll then is we'll reverse that round and tie it in. So the length we're looking for for that is to be more or less the length of the front of what we've got left for the thorax. And that's because we're once this is in, we're going to look to fold that forward to create the wing case. So push that all down and then we can nip at that. So we don't need that anymore. And then we're going to take more of our Danica coloured dubbing to just dub this thorax area so get a nice spread of it and we're just looking to cover up this whole front area we'll always take quite a few turns just to cover the wire work from underneath Don't worry if you have to go forward and then work back up in order to cover everything. And take this back down. You can always twist. We've got a little bit of wire showing just back here. So let's take a fraction more dubbing. Obviously the fish don't mind, but it's always nice to know that we've covered it there. And then we're going to bring our wing case forward. Just trying to keep the fibres on either side. Can sometimes be a bit of a wrestle, but get that nice cover going up there. And then what we do, and this is the reason why we cut the tip out, is we then try and part these fibres 50-50 either side of the hook, push them back. And once we're able to hold them there, we then take our thread, try and strike them down a little bit as well. And that will give you your leggy area on the fly. And in the process of doing that you also create the thread head on the front. And that gives you your nice swimming mayfly appearance. And then you can go in with the whip finish tool or hand finish of course and just finish that off and in the morning times when you see fish on on the mayfly but they're not quite taking the fly off the surface the style of mayfly nymph is absolutely deadly um, and if you can do it just give a little lift of the rod tip and that will just speed the fly up through the water and quite often induce the take
So fly number two uh, is going to be uh, my own Jardine Mayfly merger. So once the nymphs have battled their way through trout to get to the surface, the fly then struggles through a really thick, difficult part of the water to break through and at the same time it's completely changing body shape uh, into its fully winged uh, adult version or uh, adolescent version uh, and it's at this stage that is critical um, for targeting fish because fish really hone in on this stage and um, um, and you don't want to miss out on not having anything to represent it and this fly has been incredibly effective for me so hook is the partridge um, K12 ST uh, and I tie it usually in a size 10 and a 12 um, the same style of fly can also work well for March Brown and other types of fly for that you want to be tying them in sort of 14s, 16s and so on um, anything smaller than that um, this particular style of tying can get tricky um, but a great fly nonetheless uh, thread we've got the Semperfly Nano Silk 18 in black and we're just going to start our thread work just back from the eye and lay a nice touching turn thread base all the way down to about level with the with the barb on this uh, we are actually going to take it a little bit further just being a curved hook we want to go around and the reason we're tying it on this elongated curved hook is we want to capture that half in the water half exploding out uh, stage of the fly so our first material uh, is going to be uh, pheasant tail just natural um, cock pheasant and we're going to count out three three fibers all with nice tips on them as well Once we've got that, so the ephemera danica has three tails, so I always find that, I don't know if the fish bother counting the tails, as quite often the naturals you see have a tail snapped off or, or similar, but it always feels better when you've matching what the natural has. So again, Nice short tail, uh, like with the nymph, put a few locking turns and then fold these tag ends back and put a couple more turns on. Then take your thread forward, slightly open turns and then big open turns up to the eye. And that's just to clear the thread out the way of the, uh, the point of the hook. And then we're going to wind our tag end of the pheasant forward. So the back three segments of the um, ephemera danica, so the mayfly, has little dark markings on and by winding the, the um, pheasant it's just imitating those slightly darker parts at the back. Right, hold that there and just unwind those big open turns that you put in and that will take your thread back and it's there then to tie off the pheasant and then once that's there so you've got two ways to do this you can either cut the pheasant off or you can pull it against the thread keep the pressure on the thread otherwise you'll see it unravel and that can be quite painful and if you're going to break them off break them off one by one and now I, uh, for the body I don't bother putting a rib on here uh, I just go straight in for the Semperfly uh, Semper Superfine dubbing in Danica. Um, pick a nice bundle there. Always start with a nice thin section. Get that locked down and bound onto the hook and then you can start to tighten the remaining parts there. 
and wind forward. Again, we're looking to build in a taper here. So you might want to take a few turns forward and then a couple of turns back on themselves in order to get a nice, nice taper as you go. So the great thing with the Mayfly is being a bigger, bulkier fly is you can get away with putting more materials in, which can help mask some mistakes as well as you go. Right, now we're looking to build up to the thorax area, so I probably want another couple of turns of dubbing, but not much more than that. Uh, because, like so many fires, we want to make sure we've got enough room to work in the thorax and head area. So, that's it, that's our body formed, and now we're going to add in the important wing area. So first of all we've got two and a half mil flat foam uh, that I've then cut down into or probably about three and a half, four mil thickness or width and I'm just going to lay that on top of the hook. Now because we're using this fine nano silk it's important that the first turns that it take on the foam aren't too tight otherwise you'll cut right through the foam so lay loose turns and that will create a bed and then you can tighten down on top of those turns and that will save you cutting through it so bind that down facing backwards a nice long section and once you're happy that's all bound down we're going to then tie in our hackle. So we're essentially doing a parachute, but with the slanted foam, and then two decent sized uh, natural CDC feathers. Um, so for the biggest feathers, um, generally you can take goose CDC. Uh, this is duck CDC, just picking the longer, uh, the longer feathers in the uh, in the packet. And now we're just going to stroke the fibres backwards, exposing the tip. And hold that against the post and just bind, bind the tip in. And we can cut that away. And then take the second feather and do the same again. Uh, once, sort of bound down. They're both in there now. We can cut that tag out there as well. And then grab our hackle pliers. Now to wind this, I find it's easier to take the lower feather first, hold our post forward and begin to wind. Wind in the groove at the bottom, but with each turn, just try and wind a fraction higher up. You might want to loosen some of the fibres because in CDC it will, uh, some of them will get trapped as you wind. Right, for the last turn then, it's quite important, pull the fibres up and take the feather in underneath. That will help just push everything and free it all up. Strike it all out the way and then use the weight of the Hackle pliers just to hold it in position while you lock that away. And then go in with your scissors and just nip out the tag end. And then this time we're going to take the second feather and again we're going to wind slightly above 
the previous turn so not to trap too many fibers and again with that last turn strike everything up take the feather through and underneath stroke everything back and then go in with our nano silk and the great thing with nano silk is you've got the strength there to really bind down and make sure that's not going anywhere and then in with the scissors and cut out that tag end and then we've got the start of our our wing you'll have a few fibers trapped down you can ease those out with either a dubbing needle or uh, just hook them out with your whip finish tool nib so you've got as much fibre as possible going on and then just take your thread and just bind make sure everything's bound down and neat enough we're going to cover that with dubbing so we don't need to make sure everything's covered uh, and then for the dubbing we've got um, the Nature Spirit African Goat dubbing in Canadian Leech Brown it's a great a great fly dubbing it's got olives and browns and um, sort of reds and all sorts so it just says fishy really so bind that on it's a bit like seals first so it's quite tricky to to bind to um, to the thread but just keep applying pressure and twisting and that locking in so now with these turns make sure you're almost winding back on yourself to begin with to fill in any gaps you might have and you're looking to fill up the thorax area so when the fish is looking underneath they can see the dark wing wing area as it's exploding out and really cover that up and then leave yourself a nice nice clean area at the front behind the eye because we're now going to pull this foam forward so just part your CDC fibers slightly and then as we pull this foam forward you'll start to see this wing beginning to really explode over creating the emerging mayfly stage and then remember not to put too much pressure on the foam here just bind down and then a couple of turns in front and then just a fraction more dubbing just to fill up oh, I to drop that. just to cover that little thread area and then we'll take our whip finish tool in front of the foam we can nip our thread out Cut the foam just level with the eye and that's pretty much it and you can just neaten this up with the fingernail just to shorten some of these CDC fibers back and there you have it the Jardine Mayfly Emerger a great mayfly imitation now for fly number three we're going to do a fly that my father came up with um, by combining different elements so the Jardine French CDC done um, and this is to imitate we've done the nymph we've done the emerger now this is once the flies hatched out and trying to fly away so lots of wings meant to look delicate in its approach and quite imitative of that stage Hookwise, we've got the Partridge SLD2 uh, in a size 10, um, and we're going to tie this using the uh, Semperfly Black Nano Silk uh, in 18O. 
and we'll start just back from the eye of the hook and take our thread all the way along the shank to just shy of the bend. Uh, now like with the Jardine Mayfly Emerger, for this we're going to use pheasant tail for the tail and we're going to select three fibers and we'll nip those out this time we can tie them a little bit longer so I like a bit longer than the shank length Bind those down a little and then fold back the tag end, bind that down, a few open turns and we're going to create those dark segments at the back of the mayfly with the three turns of the pheasant tail which is back wind our thread, so that's where we need it. And then tighten that down. And again, because we're using that nano silk, we can just break those pheasant tail fibers out one by one. And make that nice and neat. And then we're going to make our body using the Semperfly uh, Super Fine Dubbing in Danica again. So get a nice amount of it. Just bind that down. We want to create a taper going forward, but it doesn't need to be too pronounced in a flight because this one is all about the wings now. Again, with these mayfly patterns, you want to make sure you've left plenty of room at the front for the wing area. And we're now going to tie it in the hackle, so the bit that gives it its French name. This is French partridge. And you want, this is already prepared, I've already removed uh, the fluffy fibers down the bottom. And you'll see this has got the grey, nice sort of whitey yellow band, the black band, and then that nice tan brown band. Just looks fantastic on any fly. And now to prepare this, like preparing any sort of soft tackle feather, just stroke back the fibres to include the ones that you want in your fly in this portion and the ones that you don't want on that tip section. So stroke it back and then tie it so tie it tip facing backwards with the curve of that feather going up away from the shank of the hook and take your thread to where you want that hackle to sit on the fly and then take your thread over just wind that back, applying pressure as you go. And then we can just nip the tip section of that out. And trap down any unwanted fibres there. And now we're going to create the thorax, but also sort of part of the underwing as such, using two CDC feathers. So one natural, so natural grey brown and then one olive CDC. And how we do this, I've got a handy little um, clip here. So if you have something like the Mark Pettigeon Magic Tool, uh, that's perfect for this job. Now, all I'm going to do is put the feathers tip to tip and strike out some of these fibers. And then take my clip and clip 
the fibers that I want to tie in and then I'm going to run my scissors along and cut the stems out of the CDC because I don't want the stems in and then once it's all done you're just left with I don't know if you can see you're just left with the tips of the CDC feather there and then we take our dubbing needle and that's one of the benefits of using the nano cell because you can actually split it at 18 hour it does take a little bit of practice to get used to doing it but once you split the thread in two there you can then take your CDC fibers that you've cut out and just place the clip in between the two sections you have to concentrate at this bit because you don't want to miss any of those and before you tighten anything up you can just adjust all of that so to make it a bit thicker and then well you can't just rotate your bobbin but hold it on your finger and then let go of the finger and that will should didn't that time uh, but that will then spin the thread round and lock all of those fibers in place and then keep going until you're satisfied that it's all locked in and it's not going to come out at any point point. and then the great thing about working with a dubbing loop like that is you can just wind everything on as if it was like a hackle stroke everything back and then take your thread just in front of the hackle I like to then reposition the hook slightly up at that point and then take your hackle pliers on the French partridge here just release some of, some of those fibers and then take it round so down so all the way round once and then down again and back up and then take your thread over it so it's one and a half turns and then a couple of turns of thread behind turn my hackle pliers off at that point and then just create the head area go in with the scissors and just trim that out there tidy up anything left behind from the cut that you can and then take your whip finish tool Again, just for luck and then you can push out some of trap uh, the thread out there and you can 
just free up some of those fibers and there you have a very effective mayfly dun imitation the Jardine CD, French CDC so now the final fly of the video and we've got right to the end of the mayfly cycle so we've done the nymph, we've done the emerger, the dun and now we're going to tie the spent mayfly so the spent mayfly is designed to imitate the fly right at the end of its life so laying its eggs or having so the female in insect going back to the water to lay its eggs or having died in the process of it so we're looking at crucifix style wings we're looking at a fly that is trapped in the water and not going anywhere uh, and one that the fish have all the time in the world to take so it can be really tricky fishy in those conditions but also really rewarding and often when some of the biggest fish come out. So hookwise we've got the Partridge SLD2. Uh, thread we've got the Semperfly Nano Silk 18 in white. And again we'll just start back from the eye of the hook. And just lay a nice thread base all the way down to the end of the straight part of the shank and then we can knit that tag out. So the tail, um, you can use a sort of most fibre, uh, I've got a, uh, you can just about see, a black bucktail here uh, and then I just take fibres from the bottom of here, so you want three of them. Always tricky to select three, but was selecting four or five, but just want three. There we go. So we've got our three fibers for the tail now. Make sure they're all roughly the same length and then tying them in you can make them one and a half or even longer lengths of the body and the thing with bucktail is it's a hollow fiber so when you put pressure on it it will Uh, it will split out a little bit which will help give you that spread of the tails and then just make sure they're bound down and you can just break them against the thread and that creates the body area and then For the rib, uh, I've taken just some black nano silk uh, and to tie it in, just take it round and use the weight of the bobbin just to secure it against the shank. And then a couple of locking turns, and you can have the two strands together, uh, but you could use any, any black thread for that area. And then the body we're going to take off white uh, a super fine dubbing in white and lengthen our thread off a little and just begin to bind that all down Again, we're looking for a slight taper as we go forward. That's building up to that thorax area. And again, making sure there's plenty of room left. 
we can then take our our black thread for the rib and just give a nice open segment rib going forward and then just tie that off there and now we're going to tie in a hackle very quickly. So here we've got a, um, a medium grey done uh, saddle, uh, and I've just selected one of the darker, darker feathers on the on the saddle. Um, just prepare this by taking a few lower fibers off and that will expose the stem and then I tie it with the back of the feather facing the shank of the hook and then bind down and just that little tag end We'll be able to fold back a little bit and bind that down so that covers that whole front section there and then we're going to create the crucifix wings so we're taking just some Semperfly poly yarn uh, and we're using this grey here and cut a decent length so we've got a good inch and a half of it here and I don't actually need all of it so I split split it in half so if you've got half of the fibres then take a comb and just brush through those fibres and just ease them ease them out a little bit and then turn it around and do the same. It just frees up the fibres a little bit, it makes for a better wing. And so to tie this in, use the weight of the bobbin to trap it in. And we're looking for halfway between the eye and where we're going to start the hackle. So and a couple of locking turns down and then pull I always pull the forward facing bit towards me and the backwards facing bit away and take the thread in between them then that push one back and pull one forward and then you're starting to get your Crucifix formation. So don't overdo it, make sure you've got some going the other way across them as well. And that will make them really secure and well bound. So they're not going anywhere then. It's always one fibre that gets caught going where you don't want it and then take thread back to the start and get a black super fine dubbing just a small amount this is purely just laying a a bed for the hackle to sit into take it round So I take it through the wing and back over the other way. And then if you're not quite got enough, get a little bit more. Just 
so you can lay the last bits just in front there. Final turns and take the thread right to the front there. Make sure those wings are roughly in position at this point, and then take your hackle pliers, ease your hackle forward, and then try and get it to rotate. There we go. The correct way. So we've got one turn at the back of the thorax set, and then an open turn a little bit further forward, and then if you can, you might be able to just take the hackle through through the wing. So it then falls in front. Not to attract too many fibres as you do that move. And then one full turn in front. And then bring that up and take your thread through the hackle. And again. Stroke everything back and take your thread in front. And then I like to just put in one quick finish there so the thread's not going anywhere. Then you can go in with your scissors, nip out the feather, just check nothing doesn't need tidying up and then go in with your main main whip finish there and then you can take your thread out now we're not quite done because we still have the wings to tidy up here so get it into a position that you can See the, the wing and then just cut it out. I like to do a slight taper back towards the bend of the hook and the wing you want to be longer, just a fraction longer than the body as well and you want to try as much as possible to get them roughly the same length but it's always tricky that one but you'll then see how it's got a slight soft edge to try and make it look like the real insect on the water and there you have it the spent mayfly one for the evening time on the river so you've got a mayfly for all occasions there. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, please do give it a like, uh, comment if you've got any questions and subscribe for future videos. Thank you for joining and I'll see you again on the next one.